What a Sunday. Let's talk about what happened in week one today. For starters, let's talk about injuries. I can't believe this happened to J.K. Dobbins. The man tore his Achilles, unfortunately, and will miss the rest of the season. This guy cannot catch a break. And to think he was holding in for a new contract and the Ravens wouldn't give it to him because they had injury concerns. And then he goes and gets hurt like this. I just, I feel horrible for him. As far as fantasy, we saw Justice Hill score a couple of times, which was kind of a surprise. I kind of figured Gus Edwards would pick up a little bit more slack. Edwards did have a two-point conversion. Moving forward, these are probably the two guys that you want to grab off the waiver wire. They'll form some type of committee. Um, I would also imagine that Melvin Gordon or maybe somebody else from the practice squad will likely get elevated. But either way, tough break for Dobbins, and I wish him a speedy recovery. Next up, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was cooking before suffering a hamstring injury on his second touchdown. He got off to a slow start in the first half, but in the second half, he scored a rushing touchdown and had a long receiving touchdown. And that's where he got hurt. On that long receiving touchdown, he came up lame as he was going into the end zone. We'll see if it looks serious. He definitely was getting worked on in the sideline and didn't return. But if you have A.J. Dillon, I definitely would consider getting ready to use him. It's very likely that Jones misses some time, especially being a hamstring injury. I mean, he's definitely liable to re-injure it if he comes back too quickly. So I would imagine, given that they have Dylan, the Packers will likely take things carefully with Jones. Next, let's talk about a couple of Steelers. Tough day for the Steelers in general. They just couldn't get anything going. But Deontay Johnson suffered a hamstring injury on one of his few catches on the day. He started off slow as well, then started to come on. Unfortunately, he got injured on his biggest catch of the day. Um, and then Pat Fryermuth also got injured. He scored a touchdown. I think that was his only reception of the day also. Um, he suffered a chest injury. It's a little bit unknown what it was specifically. Um, it sounds like it's less serious than Johnson's. Johnson needed assistance getting off the field. So I wouldn't be surprised if he misses some time, given that it's a hamstring as well and that he's a receiver. It would not be shocking if he did. This obviously means that George Pickens' stock is going to go up even more. But also, we saw Allen Robinson get involved pretty heavily. He had eight targets and five receptions, I believe, for 64 yards. So he's someone else to consider in deeper leagues as well. Um, it should be interesting to see how it plays out. I would imagine the Steelers will probably try to lean on their running game more now. Maybe Jalen Warren gets some more run. But tough break for the pass catchers in Steeltown. A couple of other injuries that were notable were Greg Dulcich and Jacoby Myers. Dulcich suffered a leg injury. Not sure what it was specifically, but it was bad enough to cause him to leave the game and not return. Um, Cortland Sutton scored a touchdown. I would imagine his usage will go up even more. It's not quite certain how long Dulcich will be out, but I would imagine there are other options you can pick up off the waiver wire in the interim if you are relying on him. Um, and then on the Raiders side, Jacoby Meyer suffered a pretty nasty concussion. He had a couple of touchdowns, and I didn't see that coming. I mean, he looks like he's going to be pretty heavily involved in this offense, wishing him a speedy recovery as well. Um, I know concussions can be tricky, and he's going to have to overcome the protocol if he wants to have a chance to suit up next week. Moving right along, let's talk about some first-round rookies. Uh, for quarterbacks, Bryce Young kind of had up and down game, a little bit more down than up. He had a couple of interceptions. I don't think he threw for even 150 yards, but he did have his first touchdown to Hayden Hurst. So all was not lost. The Panthers did lose the game pretty handily. Um, they were kind of in it in the beginning, but just didn't shake out the way they wanted to. Um, I would imagine that Young will just get better as the season goes along, but definitely looked like a rookie performance. Um, next up, Anthony Richardson. Richardson looked like Cam Newton out there, uh, a little bit at least. He had a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. Um, he was pretty heavily utilized overall. I thought they would maybe protect him a bit more, but... They rolled him out there, let him sling it. Um, unfortunately, he did suffer a small injury at the end of the game uh, when the game was pretty much out of hand and it was down to under a minute. He looks like he suffered a knee bruise of some sort. He's downplayed it, said it isn't serious, but of course, I'd keep an eye on the injury report throughout the week. Players always seem to be overly optimistic, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out going into week two. But he looked pretty good, and I think he exceeded a lot of expectations. He did have an interception, but that was kind of expected. Uh, and then C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud looked pretty solid. He didn't have a touchdown, didn't have an interception. He did have a fumble, um, but he looked like a game manager more than anything, in my opinion. The Texans in general were in that game until the second half, and then it kind of got away from them, but they may be more competitive than people are anticipating. I would imagine that Stroud will also get better as the season will go along, and hopefully that allows the Texans to be in some more games. But as of now, they definitely look like a rebuilding team. 
And then Bijan Robinson. Robinson looked like the real deal today. He had involvement in the passing game, the running game. He had a great touchdown through the air. He really put a good move on a defender and then found his way into the end zone. The only thing that was a little concerning was Tyler Algier vulturing two goal line touchdowns. Uh, that's something to monitor moving forward. I mean, I expected Algier to be pretty involved, but not to this degree. I wouldn't worry just yet because the season's so early on, but Algier is someone you definitely want to pick up. I already felt like he had some standalone value, but he may have even more value than I anticipated, especially if he continues to have a role like this. Um, he got plenty of carries and he got plenty of yards. And like I said, he scored a couple of touchdowns. So it looks like he's carved out a pretty consistent role for himself. Now let's talk about some players that really blew it out of the water this week. First, Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua had 15 targets, 10 receptions, and 119 yards. And I expected him to be involved, but for a rookie to be relied on this heavily, it was shocking to say the least. I would definitely grab him off the waiver wire. I think he's pretty much the number two receiver behind Cup when he does returns. And he probably will be the number one guy until Cup does. Van Jefferson did not really seize that role, and he had a pretty nasty drop on a wide open look. And Stafford was not afraid to go Nakua's way. So I would imagine that Nakua is going to continue to be a PPR monster, at least for the foreseeable future. And I would definitely grab him off the waivers if he is available. Next, Calvin Ridley. Ridley was who we thought he was. Eight receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown. This guy is clearly the number one guy in Jacksonville. Um, Zay Jones had a touchdown too, which was spectacular, but I definitely believe that Ridley is the guy moving forward. Ridley's already been getting rave reviews coming out of training camp, and everyone kind of expected this to happen, but I think now it's official. He's definitely the number one guy in Jacksonville and is a must-start moving forward. Then the most exciting game of the day, Miami versus the Chargers. I mean, Tua, 466 yards, three touchdowns. We'll ignore the couple of fumbles. But my gosh, he looked good. If this man can stay healthy, there's no telling what the ceiling is. Especially with guys like Waddle and Hill, who looked amazing today. Hill had 215 yards receiving on 11 receptions and 2 touchdowns. I mean, he looked unstoppable. These guys are going to be a tandem that are going to rewrite the history books if they keep this up. I mean, both of them looked like they were running at a different speed than everybody on the field. And if Tua can stay healthy... I think he could have a season for the books. Lastly, the team that was the most shocking, the Bengals. I mean, T. Higgins had eight targets and zero catches. He put up a bagel. Couldn't believe it. I mean, even Jamar Chase was running his mouth before the game and then really didn't show up either. I mean, Burrow had a long layoff, so I was kind of worried about this happening given that he hasn't practiced. But for some reason, the Browns always seem to have his number. And he needs to get this monkey off of his back. I mean... I really didn't think it would be this bad, but clearly I was wrong. They looked like they were unmatched, and if they want to have any chance of competing in the AFC North, they're going to have to get it together in a hurry. That rounds out today. We got the Jets and Bills on deck tomorrow, which should be a good one. Can't wait to see Brees Hall make his debut. Hopefully, sounds like he will. But I hope everyone is either winning their Week 1 matchup or is on the way to winning their Week 1 matchup. Please subscribe and let me know your thoughts on today in the comments below.